Here at the 2017 Silver and Gold Summit, I'm joined by Spiro Kakos from uh, Great Panther Silver. How are you doing today? I'm fine, fine. Good to see you. Me too. Um, so, you know, the silver market has been relatively weak. I mean, a lot better than compared to, say, two years ago, 2015. Is Great Panther making, uh, generating much positive cash flow in uh, this market? We are. It's, uh, you're right. Last year, we was a great, great market for a lot of the silver companies such as us. Um, we saw the, the, the end of the, um, the bear market end in January of 2016, and it, everything just took right off after that, seeing $21 silver twice, I believe. Um, it's, but uh, the volatility of that has seemed to have calmed down a little bit, so we're seeing a more stable $16, $17 silver. silver. And um, which is which is fine because companies such as us are, are cash positive at this point, right? And uh, we're we're happy with our with our current uh, growth and uh, happy with our all the sustaining costs. Um, a lot of companies have started reinvesting into their assets, uh, primarily in exploration, to increase their mine lives. Mm -hmm. Have uh, has Great Panther done the same? Well, we have an option. We we have we have two mines, as you know. There's one mine called Topia, which is in the north part of Mexico, called Durango. That mine produces roughly, I think, 35% of uh, what we make, um, of what we produce, I should say. And the other mine called the Guanajuato Mine Complex, which is a combination of Guanajuato Mine and San Ignacio, produces 65% of what we make or we produce. Um, those mines, that area is very rich. In, in around there's a lot of potential with smaller projects that we can you know invest more money and and, and look and try increase uh, the resource estimate in those projects um, and grow them and if they grow if it's big enough and it's and it proves that you know we can we it's profitable we can expand our our minds um, and and add that into it but it's a it's a time consuming process and um, and it's also expensive but it doesn't mean it's no, it's, it's a possibility. But we find right now, uh, with having $55 million in the bank and no debt, uh, our, our currency is better used acquiring something which is already in production or you know, near-term production. Um, and our recent acquisition in Peru, Corocancha, explains just that. It's our first step to grow. It's actually our first step to move outside of, outside of Mexico as well. Great. Um so can you uh, touch a bit upon Coracancha, what you guys expect to be the economics more or less once a pre-feasibility study is uh, Well, I, I don't want to be too forward looking, but I know the mi that mine itself has been in operation since about 1906. Uh, it's it's permitted. It's got an operate. It's 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 got all the necessary uh, you know fundamentals that we need to bring back into production. Mm -hmm. um, our in-house guesstimate shows us roughly about twenty-five million dollars, and could take it in between eighteen to twenty-four months. But you know, to do things more accurately, uh, we are we've got a historical resource, a very big historical resource, that we're um, updating, and in the next thirty days, by before the end of the year, um, we'll have that announced. Um, on that resource estimate, um, we're going to commence a pre immediately commence a pre-feasibility study, and the results of that feasibility study should come out by March, and that'll give us the right numbers on how to go forward. But you know, we're obviously quite optimistic that uh, it's enough m enough cash in the treasury to bring that into production quite fast. So, would Great Panther make a construction decision based on the pre-fees? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, it, the construction's already there, but you have to. Upgrade. There's yeah. always going to be uh, yeah. upgrades in the mine, and that will require what you Correct. say, 25 million plus in capital investment. Something like that, yeah. Because uh, the mine was in production up to 2013, and it closed down. Near Star had it, and they shut it down because of you know um, the, 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 the the poor price in uh, in silver. So, and eventually, in, by 2014 or 15, I should say, they decided to make a move outside of um, to, to 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 sell all their projects they have in Peru and go back into commodity trading, which is what they do. They're a big, big Belgium company. And they had a change in, in the board as well, a change in management, so they had some of their own internal changes. So um, we're looking, you know, we, we feel that uh, that project is, is definitely warranted and, and can move quite fast in towards production. Okay, given that, uh, you know, maybe it became an economical or just break even in 2013, 
Are you guys using a higher cutoff grade for the resource estimate? Yeah, I don't want to get into the specifics of that. It's too, let the pre-feasibility study come out right now because it's, it's too forward-looking for it. For okay. kind of guess on that. So, you know, we're, it's a good mine. We got a good deal on it and we're, we're optimistic. Uh, let's, get, let's get the results and we can talk about that. Right. Hang in there, March, March. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've read that Great Panther's still looking for additional acquisitions should they present correct. themselves. Yeah, correct, correct. So what we have now is like, you know, Great Panther, you know, we have two projects uh, that are pretty much full, full, full uh, producing a full capacity. So that's a million silver cool ounces per quarter. Mm -hmm. Uh, for four million per year, um, the idea is to grow from that. The first step of growth is it could be core concha. Core concha gives us an opportunity to grow up to from four to seven, seven and a half million silver equivalent ounces. But the next project that we have could take us up and above ten, because our goal now, or our mandate, we should say, is to go from a four million silver equivalent ounce producer up and over ten within five years, and we think we can achieve it. Excellent. That's. Yeah. Great to hear. So being one of the few, the rare few uh, primary silver producers, mm -hmm. there's not that many out there, what is your outlook for the metals, say, look going out five years price-wise? Well, you know, all of us are positive in it, right? So, um, you know, there's other people like Jeff, you know, Jeff Christian that can probably speak better on the, on the commodities, but, uh, or Dan, all right? but. For me, uh, I look at it this way, where if we can be cash positive at $17 silver, and next year we're lucky enough to get 18 or $20 silver, $18 silver then, or 19, I'm really, really happy. We saw silver go to $21 and our stock went from Canadian from 70 cents to $3. Yeah, you guys have a very high beta to yeah, silvers. That's yeah, always a great thing. Very leveraged, yeah. yeah leverage is great. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yes. Yeah. Cheers. Hello, I'm David Morgan, publisher of The Morgan Report, and as some of you may already know, The Morgan Report is about money, metals, and mining. In fact, we cover all resources, from rare earth elements to precious metals. I've been publishing on the internet for about 20 years. My primary passion is to help people build and preserve their wealth. I love to make people millionaires. I've helped thousands of people via our research in The Morgan Report, which has thousands of paid members and 10 times that amount on our free weekly updates. Here's what you'll receive from our free newsletter. To the point webinars, week analysis of the financial markets, interviews and our conference schedule, special reports such as riches and resources and various metals price forecasts. Our paid service client base is primarily small to medium sized business owners professionals in the industry, or the seasoned investor who understands markets and the value of precious metals. My area of expertise includes equity analysis throughout the resource sector, energy metals, base metals. We cover startups to billion dollar corporations. We focus on a special sector that makes money regardless of price oscillations, and the importance of precious metals due to the ongoing currency devaluations. Our team of three analysts and support staff can help you build and protect your wealth. It's important for you to know what other people have said. We're passionate about what we do. High integrity and trust. Tell the truth and own it. If you're wrong, we admit it. Take a long-term outlook with major assets and bet a little to win a lot with speculative situations. If you choose to become a client, you will gain financial insights very few, even professionals, recognize. You will understand the importance of honesty in our financial system. You will understand how the money system influences almost everything in your life. You will be prepared for the ongoing currency crisis. And finally, I've chosen to make my life's mission greater than the individual, which means my mission statement is to teach and empower people to understand the benefits of an honest monetary and financial system. It's been a great journey so far and the best gains in the sector lie ahead over the next three to five years. 
I'm fortunate to have earned the status of being a leading authority in my field and helping others protect their wealth. You can email me at support at themorganreport.com or call my office at 480-325-0230.